safety training of Nigeria Manchant Navy cadets in 2002. Very distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to bring to you the selected professional certifications. In the year 19, in the year 2015, I beg your pardon, Dr. Kevin Okana obtained the National Workshop on the Implementation of the IMO Members State Audit Scheme for Nigeria, and he attended the IMO and the Massa Institution here in Nigeria, Lagos. Dr. Kevin O'Connor attended the Institute of IMO and NIMASA in Lagos, Nigeria in the year 2013 in May and obtained a certificate of participation in workshop on the London Protocol. Dr. Kevin O'Connor also attended the IMO uh, NIMASA in Lagos, Nigeria and obtained certificates in familiarization with Maniala Amendment to STCW Convention in 2010. Dr. Kevin O'Connor attended the Standard Organization of Nigeria, SON, in Abuja, Nigeria, and that was on the date February 2009, and obtain, obtained the Auditor's Certificate Revalidation. Distinguished guests, Dr. Kevin O'Connor attended the IOPC Fund and FMOT Nigeria in Lagos, Nigeria, and also claimed for comp compensation for oil pollution damage. That was a certificate he obtained in February 2006. Dr. Kevin O'Connor attended the International Maritime Organization and Federal Government of Nigeria in Abuja, Nigeria, and obtained a certificate IMO Maritime Security Train the Trainer course in October 2005. Dr. Kevin O'Connor attended the Standard Organization of Nigeria in Abuja, Nigeria, and obtained a certificate, auditor's certificate, in the year 2005, July. Dr. Kevin O'Connor also attended the Regional Maritime University in Accra, Ghana, IMO certification. He obtained a certification in IMO regional training for simulator instructors in June 2005. Distinguished guest, Dr. Kevin O'Connor attended the United States Merchant Marine Academy, GMATS, in New York, USA and obtained the certificate international support security course in the year November 2004. Dr. Kevin O'Connor also attended the Standard Organization of Nigeria, SON, in Oran, Nigeria, and obtained the qualification quality management course in October 2003. Distinguished guests, Dr. Kevin O'Connor also attended the Poison Simulators AS in Kab Kabalvag, Norway, and obtained the certificate GOC GMDSS instructor's training in the year October 2002. <laughs> Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Kevin O'Connor also attended the Telenor Telecom Solution AS in Oslo, Norway and obtain General Operator's Certificate in GMDSS in the date October 2002. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, he also attend SAHS in Travmunde, Germany, and also at obtain the Certificate Ship Safety Training and Organization Certificate in April 2001. Distinguished guests, he also attended the Maritime Institute, William Barent and also obtained the certificate MET Simulator Instructor Technology course in March 2001. Distinguished guests, he also attended the University of Applied Science Institute of Ship Operation, Sea Transport and simula Simulation in Hamburg, Germany, and obtained certificate STCW Ship Handling and Maneuvering Simulator. Instru instructor certificate, and that was in May 2001. Distinguished guest, Dr. Kevin O'Connor also attended the University of Applied Sciences, Brandman, Germany, and obtained the certificate tanker familiarization certificate in February 2001. Distinguished guest, Dr. Kevin O'Connor also attended the Uni United States Merchant Marine Academy, King Point in New York, USA and obtained Certificate International Maritime 
Corporation course in November 2000. Distinguished guests, he also attended the International Maritime Organization and Registration and Maritime Academy in Accra, Ghana, and obtained the IMO OPRC Train the Trainer course in December 1999. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to bring to you the selected publication of Dr. Kevin O'Connor. He has written some journals and books titled The Effects of Gender and Academic Performance of Maritime Training in Nigeria, Thoughts with Web-Based Resources in 2014. Distinguished guest, he also wrote a book, International Standard for the Regulation of Merchant Ship Operations in 2011. He also wrote the book titled Requirements for the Management of Maritime Safety and Security in 2011. He also wrote the book titled Effects of Web-Based Resources and the Academic Performance of Maritime Training in Nigeria in the year 2011. <laughs> Dr. Kevin O'Connor also wrote a book titled Design Considerations for Effective Web-Based Distance Learning Management System in the year 2011, October. Distinguished guest, he also wrote the book title the effects of frequency of use of web-based communication facilities on the academic performance of maritime trainee in Nigeria. And also that was in the year September 2011. He also wrote a book titled Utilization of Mobile Handheld Devices and Learning in Aquaibom State Secondary Schools. And that was in the year September 2010. I thought you'd be putting your hands together for Dr. Kevin O'Connor. Distinguished guest, he also wrote a book, Legal Issues in Maritime Hazards, and that was in the year 2009. He also wrote another book titled, Shipping Market Operations, Chattering and Ship Sales and Purchase, in December 20, 2006. He also wrote another book, the book titled, The Importance of Teacher Evaluation in the Context of Quality Management, in 2006 edition. Distinguished guest, he wrote a book titled Computer Aided Learning Packages and Maritime Education and Training in the year 2006 edited. Distinguished guest, he also wrote a book titled Seaman's Pay and Work Motivation in the year December 2003. Distinguished guest, he also wrote a book The Changing Paradigm in the Sovereignty of Maritime Nations. And that was in December 2003. He wrote a book also, Strategies for Maritime Manpower Development for West and Central Africa. And that was in the year 2003 edition. Distinguished guest, he also wrote a book, Quality Standard System in MET Institution, STCW 95 Perspective. And that was the edition of October 2003. Distinguished guests, he also wrote another book titled Implementation of the GMDSS Provisions in Nigeria and the Maritime Industry. And that was in the year December 2002. He also wrote another book, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, The Web-Based Distance Learning Management System, an investigation into WMU's future needs. Distinguished Guests, and that was in the year 2001. I'd like to read to you also the selected seminar conferences and papers written by Dr. Kevin O'Connor. Distinguished, you also have a STCW convention and seafarers training in Nigeria, and a workshop for, the workshop for NAT Assembly Maritime Legislative Staff, UYO, on the 10th of June, 2003. 2023, rather, I beg your pardon. He also attended the conference, STCW convention and seafarers certification in Nigeria, Workshop for NA Maritime Legislative Staff, UYO, on the 10th June, 2023. Okay, he also did a paper presentation on Seafarers Training and Certificate Academy's Perspective, Alumni of Maritime Academy of Nigeria, All on Stakeholders Forum, Lagos, on the 21st of April, 2022. Distinguished guest, he also did um, a paper presentation on discussants on paper titled 
growth and development of shipping industry in Nigeria, creating an enabling environment by Captain A. Bill. In 2016 World Maritime Day celebration by the Federal Ministry of Transportation in Lagos on the 2nd November 2016. He also presented a paper, Developments in Ship Bridge Technology and their impact on work on watchman on watch keeping functions in on the on the fifth annual international conference and exhibition on transport technology zaria nigeria in october 2014 distinguished guests he also had a paper presentation in utilization of web based cost management system for meta theory based approach to development of criteria for selection on the 18th Conference of International Maritime Lecturers Association, IMLA. Distinguished guests, he also did a paper presentation on the STCW Convention Certification Provisions for Safety and Emergency Response Training Analysis of Apparent Ambiguities. On the 16th Conference of International Maritime Lecturers Association, IMLA. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to bring to you the Excellence Award of Dr. Kevin O'Connor, he was the best graduating student in shipping technology in 1996 Maritime Academy of Nigeria, Oron. I'd like to also bring to you the special awards of Dr. Kevin O'Connor. He also got an award in safety motivator award by the Institute of Safety Professionals of Nigeria, ISPON, on the 5th of September, 2015. He also got another award in the Meritorious Diamond Award for National Development by Corporate and Media Africa Communications Limited in 2012. He also got another award in, pres in President, President Association of Nigerian Students as the WMU Malmo, Sweden in 2001. He also got another award in Postgraduate Study Fellowship of the World Maritime University, Malmo, Sweden, 2000. He also got another award as the President's National Association of Physics Students, 1989. And he also got another award as a Senior Prefect Government Secondary School, Nto Nsek Ekot Ekwene in 1989 and 1984. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, permit me as I bring to you Dr. Kevin O'Connor. The speaker for the second paper presentation. Please, a round of applause for him. Thank you. Hello. It's on? It's on. Okay. Thank you very much, the MC. I, I couldn't help but um, be a little bit um, in a difficult position while he was going through my entire CV because I sent a shorter version. It looks like that was missed. Um, that couldn't be so easy. Okay, and many of the references to books are not books. They are journal articles I, I have and some papers presented at seminars. I have only been involved in writing four books. Two personal, one uh, in collaboration with our former uh, administrator, engineer Ken Soji, and another one as a co-author. Um, so many of what uh, was read as books are journals and seminar presentations. Okay. I have to also appreciate the MC and the organizers for being so generous to almost go through my entire CV. And I think what was even left out is very important to draw your attention to the fact that I'm a member of the Nautical Institute in the UK, I'm also a member of the Institute of Marine Engineering, Science and Technology, also in the United Kingdom. Uh, I am a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport. Thank you very much for your attention. Let's get into the main meets. But before I do that, please permit me to, uh, in addition to these little corrections, 
uh, utilize already existing and established protocols, but without uh, craving your indulgence to recognize uh, our first presenter and General General, Rear Admiral Akwan. Thank you very much for always coming to identify with the academy. Director is not here, but is the ultimate person to be appreciated. I know there is somebody standing in, but I mean director in person. I have to fully appreciate him for giving me this opportunity to be here. And just like the registrar standing in for the director said, senior citizen. coming in as senior citizen. I also have to appreciate the presence of somebody that many of you might not have seen. Can you tell the uh, cadets there that is sleeping to wake up, please? Uh, be your neighbor's keeper. I have to appreciate the presence of one of our very foremost alumnos, alumno, uh, alumnos, yes, one of our alumni, um, Captain Sonny Umore the Secretary General of Abuja MOU, an alumnus of Maritime Academy of Nigeria. He's right there at the back, and um, we couldn't start without recognizing his presence. Thank you very much also the committee that is headed by the registrar, my good friend, Mr. P.M. Netson, and every member of management of Maritime Academy of Nigeria and our very dear graduating cadets. It's always good to be here, and uh, we will always find time to be in the academy. So, I'm here to present a paper titled Digitalization in the Maritime Industry and the Prospects and Challenges for Skilled Maritime Workforce. In presenting this very important topic because of the importance of digitalization to the maritime industry, I would like to set out by recognizing the importance of the maritime industry to the world economies, to world trade, and to the economies of the nations, of the different nations. Uh, it's very common to have um, the contributions of the maritime industry to world trade being quoted at about 90%. Um, but the data I have used here is from Ongtat. But be um, careful to take note of the fact that we are looking at the portion that is of global trade. If you add carriage of goods by sea, that is happening around the regions and locally, we will certainly achieve this 90% of contributions to uh, carriage of the global trade by sea. This importance cannot be uh, taken for granted because everything that you have on you, whether it is the beret you have, or whether the shirt you are wearing, or whether it is the shoes you have. Maritime, the maritime industry and maritime transportation might have contributed to that wristwatch you are carrying, or that smartphone that is in your pocket. So it is very important for the maritime industry to do well. And one of the things that is believed to contribute to the efficiency of the maritime industry is what we are going to discuss, and that's why we are interested in talking about the utilization of digital technologies, or so-called digitalization in the maritime industry. The importance of the maritime industry to global trade was really put to test in very recent years. And uh, our general has already mentioned what COVID did and how every other industry was shut down 
and the entire world was looking up to the maritime industry to carry the world supply of medicals and even food. So aircraft could no longer function. Everybody was looking up to the maritime industry. And this is why we have to continue to discuss whatever factors will ensure the resilience of this industry. So you remember the COVID-19 pandemic and all the disruptions to the global system? And the global system was basically depending on ships to carry those things that were going to be used in combating the pandemic. And of course, after the COVID, post-COVID, we have also had some global crises, including the war in Ukraine and another one that is going on in uh, Gaza, Gaza, as we talk. Uh, the one in Ukraine brought a lot of pressures to ship shipping because of altering shipping routes. And you know when shipping routes are altered, for example, you have the ships having to go through longer routes. They have direct impact on supply of ships. And the moment supply of ships is affected, there's also going to be pressure on demand. And when there's pressure on demand for vessels, only one thing is going to resolve, increase freight rates. And those increased, freight, those increased freight rates for the different types of shipping will only be converted to cost of the goods that have to go through the sea. And that is why we have to be very interested in whatever will keep shipping going without disruption. But the good aspect of these disruptions we are talking about is that they also accelerated the use of technology for facilitation of trade. Because one thing, and that was the first time I realized that in my life of getting very close to 60, that you could be in this world and for some reasons, getting close to another human being was a very serious threat to you. So this, the world had to depend on systems that will not involve human to human interaction. And you remember how devastating that situation was. Digitalization, digitalization brings transparency and speed of clearance of vessels, and that's why we are interested in discussing digitalization. Before we continue, I will want to impress on you, and in fact, just remind you of the impact of digitalization in our daily lives. Sometimes we are utilizing these technologies without really um, being conscious of what we are having. I believe that every one of us, every one of us in this hall now, has a small piece of device you call a smartphone. And we frequently forget the power of these uh, digital technologies in our pocket. So we'll take a look at the impact of digitalization in our daily lives while we are looking at other sections of this presentation, which includes, before we even start to discuss digitalization, we should take note of some relevant definitions, which are very important when you are discussing digital technologies. So we'll be looking at some relevant definitions. We'll also look at the meaning of digitalization, not in isolation, because there are so many other terms that are used uh, interchangeably. Sometimes people uh, believe that uh, one can be used in place of the other, but it is actually not so. So we'll look at digitalization and we'll also look at the other terminologies that are related to it. So we'll look at why digital, digitalization is crucial to the maritime industry. We'll look at challenges to digitalization in the maritime industry. And we'll look at interventions of the International Maritime Organization and other maritime bodies in solving the challenges to digitalization. Challenges to life will always be there. What is important? is your ability to overcome those challenges. So we'll look at interventions by the International Maritime Organization and other international bodies in solving uh, these problems. One key project which is becoming mandatory in a matter of days is the maritime single window for data exchange in ports. So we'll take a very good look 
at the Maritime Single Window, which is made mandatory by the uh, Facilitation Convention of the International Maritime Organization. And we'll look at what has been going on with digitalization uh, in the Nigerian maritime industry. We will not be able, I believe, because of time, to go into all the sectors, but we'll be able to pick some of the sectors that are very critical to the functioning of this industry and look at what has been going on with respect to digitalization. And then we will look at the prospects and the challenges to skill maritime workforce. I will even prefer to see um, uh, taken into shipping, will be imbibed by the stakeholders in shipping to enhance the functioning of the maritime industry. So if you take a look at your smartphones, I'm sure you have some digital documents that are inside that smartphones now. So you can save PowerPoint. The, the presentation that I'm doing to you now uh, is inside my mobile phone. So I can access that document, assuming everything shut down. I can go to my document and get that. And that is a large um, volume of data, PowerPoint. And I also have a lot of documents in that my smartphone. These have all been made possible uh, by digital technologies and have been brought so close to us. And as you are sitting there, I believe that you have been able to use some digital applications on your smartphone to buy and sell online. So you can go to Jumia or you can go to Gigi and, and you can use other technologies to carry out online buying and selling. People have been involved in using digital technologies to hold meetings. You know, you have online meetings using Zoom or other platforms. You, many people don't go to the, airline, to the airport or the airlines anymore to book their flights. They all carry out these uh, by pressing things on, on their palm. This, these are the indication of the ease with which digital technologies have come to us but they have not been so utilized in shipping. And that's why we have to do this discussion. That's why we have to do this discussion. Another thing that I enjoy so much using these digital technologies on my farm is that banking function. So I no longer go to the bank. Uh, I send money to people and uh, I get money uh, using the banking apps on the phone. And that's what we are desiring to happen to shipping, where the bill of lading will be on a device that is accessible to the operators. Uh, you have a charter party electronic type on your palm, and all other shipping documents, and we will be able to carry out trade with much more ease with what, I mean, than what we have today. Another thing that is very important and we cannot fail to mention um, that digital technologies have brought to us is the one you call the search engine. The value of the search engines in education, whether on personal um, uh, condition or formal education. Every time, every moment, you run into something that is difficult, you run into something that you would never be able to get easily until maybe you go to a library. All you do is you grab your mobile phone and you open your Google and you type in from my own mobile phone. My mind is not the latest you have in the market. Uh, if, uh, Galaxy A A A50 is not the latest. It's many years back. But this, look at all that is available. Look at all that is available there. And um, if you permit me, I will draw your attention to some of the things you have. You can see the camera. I mean, with that phone, we can take shots as we like. With that phone, we can do calculations so you no longer need to carry a uh, physical calculator around with you. And um, you can send messages, send messages by WhatsApp. Uh, you can do an um, uh, online meeting using the Meet. Um, you can book your boat. Um, you can read your Bible online. Uh, the First Bank app is there, and the UBA is there. Endless possibilities. This is going to move towards digitalized time because of the everyday use. I mean, uh, we need to understand that digitalization is coming from the word digital. And what's digital? 
electronic technology that generates, stores, and processes data in terms of binary, binary digits of positive and non-positive. But we are not going beyond this state. Because the moment you want to go beyond this state, we'll be talking physics. Because this data that are coming in this binary state, they have been converted to those beautiful videos that you have. They have been converted to those text messages that you have. And they have been converted to signals that help you to carry out those other activities you carry out online. But they are all digital data. And that's why you buy data, to be able to use any of them. You cannot use the app, banking, Bolt, WhatsApp, unless you have bought data. So digital refers to electronic technology that generates state, or you can state it generally as anything that is represented or processed by means of digital technology, such as mobile apps, digital media, digital communication, virtual reality, audio books, digital music, digital art, podcasts, and digital marketing. Another definition that is very important, because in the course of discussing digitalization, one word that you continue to mention frequently is data. So let us also stop for a moment and understand what data means in the context of this discussion. Information that is stored and processed digitally on a computer, on a computer can take many forms, including text messages, audio, video, it may be loaded into memory and processed by computers, it's stored as files in folders on a hard drive or solid state drive. Data on a computer is stored as binary data, I've already mentioned that, where every file consists of a series of ones and zeros called bits. And just for this general discussion, eight bits make up what you call a byte, which is the basic unit of data storage. And you remember that we buy data in either megabytes or gigabytes. You remember that, isn't it? Data because digitalization is coming from the word digital. And in discussing digitalization, you talk about data almost all through the discussion. So we have to get things down. So in defining digitalization, I said I avoid the temptation of defining it in isolation because there are so many terminologies which are used interchangeably. So to do that, what you are carrying out is digitization. And it is very important to digitalization because digitization is the foundation upon which digi digitalization is uh, effected. Again, like I said, digital transformation pyramid explains the interrelationship between these terms, digitization. You need digital, digitized documents to be able to effect digitization. And that will then be combined with technologies to enhance processes in an organization. And then when these processes are of a wide scale and involves people and also involves change of culture, then you'll be moving into the realm of digital transformation. And so you can also look at other examples. Um, um, this is a pump. You could take manual readings with that pump and then type it into a computer or some other smart device and that will be dig digitization. And um, you can also get an analog clock and convert it to a digital clock. That's digitized. These digitized documents with technology and enhance the process, then you are looking at digitization. And the one that is very close to us is students, is that at the beginning of the Commodore Duja Fedwa's administration. Every lecturer was caused to digitize notes because the administration had a focus on digital transformation. And so every course lecturer was asked to convert those hard copy notes into 
digital forms like Microsoft Word or PowerPoint document or some other digital document. That was in the process of digitization because the moment smart boards were installed in all classrooms, smart boards were installed with computer projectors and every lecture, as you know, if it is not true, you tell me, every lecture in this academy today is delivered with smart screens using computer projectors. That process of delivering the lecture with this technology is digit digitization. But the way you carry out digitization will uh, move the needle from digitization into digital transformation. Because before the rector came, for example, uh, the technology, small section of the academy. But what has been achieved today is that we are no longer simply using overhead projectors, but we are now using smart screens that have additional features. Digitization into digitalization, and even can move into the realm of digital transformation. Digitization can be defined as the process of leveraging digital technologies to transform a business model, new revenue streams, and value-producing opportunities. This involves integrating digital tools and systems into various aspects of a business's operations, from management and communication to production and cost efficiency and production and lowest cost. And I believe uh, for our own uh, is about transforming analog data to digital. One is about information. Digitization is about is related to information. Digitalization is related to business processes. The goal of digitization is to reduce paper documents. The goal of digitalization is to improve business operation. And we have already looked at a number of examples. And everything that we are doing, we are laying the groundwork for discussing how digitalization can time industry positively and what it holds for the skilled maritime workforce. Transformation and digitalization are usually used in DT, digital transformation, uh, um, involves much wider use of digital technologies as well as a shift in culture, as I explained in this academy. Uh, before the rector came, we were struggling at the mandatory courses center because of accreditation requirements to do our presentations with overhead projectors in many cases. Small part of the academy. But under this administration, that has been taken to every nook and cranny of the institution. And everybody's using the process of fundamentally changing anything, utilizing digital technologies. And it refers to the use of technology and perhaps cultural shifts to better or replace what was previously that transformation. And it has effect on people. It has effect on people. Because you either ship in or you ship out. Examples, I've already said, mandatory use of paperless. Okay, I didn't mention the exits, for example, is mandatory on certain types of ships. Search, search progress, that paper electronic chart display and information system. Because if you click on any a chart that you use to plan your voyage, 